Hi friends, I am Annie F. Downs. Let's read the Gospels. The Gospels are the first four books of the New Testament in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are the stories of Jesus Christ's life on earth, the friendships, the parables, the sacrifices, the meals, and the miracles. Each month we get to read all four books. Make sure you're subscribed. Join us. We are almost halfway through this month. You are doing it. It's going really, really well. I'm so glad you're here. So here's how this works. I'll read three chapters to you. You can listen or read along in your own Bible, and then I'll pray, and that's it. So today is July 14th, day 14 of this month, and I'll be reading Matthew chapters 19 through 21. And this month, I'm reading from the CSB. Matthew 19. When Jesus had finished saying these things, he departed from Galilee and went to the region of Judea across the Jordan. Large crowds followed him, and he healed them there. Some Pharisees approached him to test him. They asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife on any grounds? Haven't you read, he replied, that he who created them in the beginning made them male and female? And he also said, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Why then, they asked him, did Moses command us to give divorce papers and to send her away? He told them, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because of the hardness of your hearts, but it was not like that from the beginning. I tell you, whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. His disciples said to him, if the relationship of a man with his wife is like this, it's better not to marry. He responded, Not everyone can accept this saying, but only those to whom it has been given. For there are eunuchs who were born that way from their mother's womb. There are eunuchs who were made by men. And there are eunuchs who have made themselves that way because of the kingdom of heaven. The one who is able to accept it should accept it. Then little children were brought to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them. Jesus said, Leave the little children alone and don't try to keep them from coming to me because the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. After placing his hands on them, he went on from there. Just then someone came up and asked him, Teacher, what good must I do to have eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? He said to him, There is only one who is good. If you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. Which ones? He asked him. Jesus answered, Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. I have kept all these, the young man told him. What do I still lack? If you want to be perfect, Jesus said to him, go, sell your belongings and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard that, he went away grieving because he had many possessions. Jesus said to his disciples, Truly, I tell you, it will be hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were utterly astonished and asked, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Then Peter responded to him, See, we have left everything and followed you. So what will there be for us? Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, in the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or fields because of my name will receive a hundred times more and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. Matthew 20. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the workers on one denarius, he sent them into his vineyard for the day. When he went out about nine in the morning, he saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He said to them, You also go into my vineyard, and I'll give you whatever is right. So off they went. About noon and about three, he went out again and did the same thing. Then about five, he went and found others standing around and said to them, Why have you been standing here all day doing nothing? Because no one hired us, they said to him. You also go into my vineyard, he told them. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard told his foreman, 
Call the workers and give them their pay, starting with the last and ending with the first. When those who were hired about five came, they each received one denarius. So when the first ones came, they assumed they would get more, but they also received a denarius each. When they received it, they began to complain to the landowner. These last men put in one hour, and you made them equal to us who bore the burden of the day's work and the burning heat. He replied to one of them, Friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Didn't you agree with me on a denarius? Take what's yours and go. I want to give this last man the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with what is mine? Are you jealous because I'm generous? So the last will be first and the first last. While going up to Jerusalem, Jesus took the 12 disciples aside privately and said to them on the way, See, we are going up to Jerusalem. The Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death. They will hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked, flogged, and crucified. And on the third day he will be raised. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons approached him with her sons. She knelt down to ask him for something. What do you want? he asked her. Promise, she said to him, that these two sons of mine may sit, one on your right and the other on your left, in your kingdom. Jesus answered, you don't know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I'm about to drink? We are able, they said to him. He told them, you will indeed drink my cup, but to sit at my right and left is not mine to give. Instead, it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. When the ten disciples heard this, they became indignant with the two brothers. Jesus called them over and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in high positions act as tyrants over them. It must not be like that among you. On the contrary, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many." As they were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. There were two blind men sitting by the road. When they heard that Jesus was passing by, they cried out, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. The crowd demanded that they keep quiet, but they cried out all the more, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. Jesus stopped, called them, and said, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, they said to him, open our eyes. Moved with compassion, Jesus touched their eyes. Immediately they could see and they followed Jesus. Matthew 21. When they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus then sent two disciples, telling them, Go into the village ahead of you. At once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place so that what was spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Tell daughter Zion, see, your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did just as Jesus directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt. Then they laid their clothes on them and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their clothes on the road. Others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them on the road. Then the crowds who went ahead of him and those who followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in an uproar saying, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus went into the temple and threw out all those buying and selling. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the chairs of those selling doves. He said to them, It is written, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of thieves. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. When the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonders that he did and the children shouting in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant and said to him, Do you hear what these children are saying? Jesus replied, Yes. Have you never read you have prepared praise from the mouths of infants and nursing babies? Then he left them, went out of the city to Bethany, and spent the night there. Early in the morning, as he was returning to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a lone fig tree by the road, he went up to it and found nothing on it except leaves. And he said to it, May no fruit ever come from you again. At once the fig tree withered. When the disciples saw it, they were amazed and said, How did the fig tree wither so quickly? Jesus answered them, Truly, I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, 
You will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you tell this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, it will be done. And if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you this authority? Jesus answered them, I will also ask you one question, and if you answer it for me, then I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Did John's baptism come from heaven, or was it of human origin? They discussed it among themselves. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, then why didn't you believe him? But if we say of human origin, we're afraid of the crowd because everyone considers John to be a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we don't know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, my son, go work in the vineyard today. He answered, I don't want to. But later he changed his mind and went. Then the man went to the other and said the same thing. I will, sir, he answered, but he didn't go. Which of the two did his father's will? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you didn't believe him. Tax collectors and prostitutes did believe him, but you, when you saw it, didn't even change your minds then and believe him. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. He leased it to tenant farmers and went away. When the time came to harvest fruit, he sent his servants to the farmers to collect his fruit. The farmers took his servants, beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Again, he sent other servants, more than the first group, and they did the same to them. Finally, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenant farmers saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those farmers? He will completely destroy those terrible men, they told him, and lease his vineyard to other farmers who will give him his fruit at the harvest. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This is what the Lord has done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruit. Whoever falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. But on whomever it falls, it will shatter him. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they knew he was speaking about them. Although they were looking for a way to arrest him, they feared the crowd because the people regarded him as a prophet. That is Matthew 19 through 21 in the CSB. Let's pray together. Jesus, when I hear that story of the tenants, I think about the part where you said, this is going to be taken from them and given to people who will actually produce its fruit. And God, I I just, everything you've handed to me, everything you've handed to each of us, that is our vineyard of what we're meant to do for the kingdom and, and the fruit we're meant to produce. Like, I, I don't ever want you to have to take that away from me because I'm not producing fruit well. I want all of us to really get to run in our lane and do the thing you've asked us to do so, God, would you just convict us in any way that we are not bearing fruit? Would you, as it talks about in John, would you prune us so that we do bear fruit? We just want to be a people who produce fruit for you and for the kingdom of God. And we don't want to miss that and have it taken away and given to someone else. We want to be the reliable farmer, not have our things handed to a reliable farmer. So help me to do that really well. Help us to do that really well. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.